Hi, my name is Maya Hollingshed, and I am the Adult Services Librarian at the Wando Mount Pleasant Library. Today, we have local author Janet Leakberg, who will talk about her books and the process that it took for her books to become published. Hi, Janet, and welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, tell us a little bit about yourself and what, and tell us about your books and what they're all about. Okay, um, well, I started writing when I worked for a newspaper on the east end of Long Island, and I did mostly humor um, articles, which I was very fortunate to do because the publisher actually did most of the uh, comedy, if you want to yeah. call it that. And um, I'm... I really have to say that I came, it was a stretch to go from humor to the Holocaust uh, books, which I uh, published. Um, so I got to the opportunity to meet a lot of celebrities and well-known people in the Hamptons, and I put out a book, a parody about the glamour of the Hamptons. Um, uh, because I felt like there was so much more, it, there were the beautiful uh, beaches and and I told the story through a dog's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, could you tell us about the um, books that you have, that you brought with us today? Yes, okay, so Rembrandt's Shadow uh, was published in 2016, and Restitution was just published exactly one week ago. Yeah. It's a sequel, but a standalone book. And the story is uh, based on true family history. So let me back up to 1938 when uh, Adolf Hitler uh, targeted my husband's grandfather's art dealership. So his grandfather and his brother were two art dealers in Holland and at one time they owned more Rembrandts than anyone in all of wow. Europe. So Hitler, a very frustrated artist himself who was rejected from uh, an art school, pre prestigious art school, uh, felt, I guess, an anger mm -hmm. toward them in a, in a sense, or, or Jews, because they were on the panel that rejected him at the school. So in uh, 1940, um, Holland was occupied by the Germans, and uh, Hitler sent Hermann Goering, his right-hand man, into their gallery and also into their home with a gun in his pocket. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's incredible history. And he would point to the artwork he desired. They had, they had these Dutch masterpieces that were um, much uh, looked at by all uh, art connoisseurs. So um, they had this connection, and Hitler uh, would pressure them. And one day, uh, he actually had a forced sale of 500 paintings in one sitting. And he made everything look legit by uh, writing up invoices that showed there was a sale. But the sale was very, they were very uh, short-changed. The, the value of the paintings was just a fraction of uh, what their value was. Um, so anyway, um, uh, the family, the grandfather and his brother, the two art dealers, were pressured. They were under duress, and they worked their tails off trying to collect canvases from all their connections around Europe. Mm -hmm. And they were running out of canvases to save their family. They had a large family. They saved 25 members with the exchange uh, of uh, uh, one Rembrandt for 25 visas. So they didn't know. They were escorted to the train station by uh, these uh, high-end German officials with guns and German shepherds, and they were put on a train. And the family, my mother-in-law, I remember her always telling me, we didn't know if the train doors would open to our freedom or to the death camps. Wow. But thank goodness. And then they were finally, after that train ride, they ended up in Spain, boarded a boat called the Marquis de Camillus, and they sailed on to uh, the British West Indies in Jamaica, and wow. that was an internment camp they lived out the war in for three years. So they were the lucky ones, but they lived with this guilt of the ones they left behind. Mm -hmm. 
so basically, uh, the histor historical facts were um, compiled by the top researcher in the entire world on art pilfered during World War II, who worked on our case trying to get our art back from uh, Holland. And um, so all of the historical facts are top notch. I'm so lucky to have had that. Wow. But I made a story romantic and also very humorous at the same time because that's my forte. <laughs> yeah. And but you think, how do you juggle both? But the main character, Sylvie, is a, a, a very funny woman, uh, kind of a Madame Bovary type who has her flaws and she gets in trouble a lot. But uh, the two other secondary characters show uh, more of Sylvie through their eyes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> so, well, you did talk about the research for the book and how long did it take to write the books? I see there's like a... Um, probably a four or five year gap between each book. Yes, so it took me a total of 17 years to be sitting here today. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's grueling. I don't know if I, anyone who uh, would like to uh, get into writing, I have to say it's tough. It's easier to get nonfiction books published than fiction. Mm. But I'll tell you, my heart belongs to fiction because I read stacks of books, nonfiction, statistics, cold statistics on the Holocaust, and the numbers, like almost 70 million people that suffered and died, not just Jews, civilians, yes. and one, one and a half million children alone. Mm. It, it's heartbreaking. And I couldn't feel it. I couldn't grasp those numbers. Uh -huh. So when I read one story, I have so many World War II fiction yeah. authors that I idolize. And when I read their stories about one character or just a family or a child, I bawl my eyes out because you get into their feelings, their heart, and that's what does it for me. And then you could say that it represents six million. I, I wish six million stories could be told. Yeah, but. And, then I, and with historical fiction, especially World War II and in that era being very popular this, these days, these books are pretty much right on time. Yes, yeah, very timely. Uh, we're waiting in the news. Uh, it's very timely with the news to see if we can get any paintings back. Uh, they threw us a bone. They gave us one painting. Uh, how many years ago? Wow, seven years ago, which proved uh, they knew we were under duress, the family, not right. us and you know, our grandfather. Um, but then to try to get these, the Dutch Restitution Committee, uh, the government, to actually return what rightfully belongs to us is another story yeah. because they consider it their national treasures, yet it's not theirs. Right. So we had, um, uh, you know, the Monuments Men had gone in and, and got back this artwork from these countries and returned it to the rightful countries, but not the individual owners. Mm -hmm. And the museums are giving everyone a hard time. So it's, it's a process. Wow. Yeah. Did you... When you started publishing your books, did you want did you want to go to the do the traditional route, or did you want to do it independently? How did that? And if you did just decide to go independently, why independently instead of the traditional going with the big five publishers? Yeah, well, that's the problem. They're the big five publishers, and when you try to get your foot in the door of those publishers. They usually, they are so, you know, uh, up to the eyeballs in uh, submissions that they just hand over uh, piles right. of submissions to interns, young interns, who some of them don't even know what the Holocaust is, which boggles my mind. Yes. Um, and I went to, I went back to school, got my MFA in creative writing, and I was uh, under the, uh, I, I was, I was uh, in classes with authored professors such as Ursula Hege, Stones from a River, very popular book, yes. um, uh, Frank McCourt, Angela's Ashes. These oh, wow. were my professors, yeah, and, and a, quite a few more. And so I one day gave a presentation at the end of the year on uh, writing uh, for an independent publisher. And I think it came off really well, and I encouraged people and even children to get the words on paper. I don't care who publishes it, get it out there. 
And, and in some cases, it may never get published, which I feel bad for these people, except that you can pass this on to your children, grandchildren, yeah. and, you know, that, that says a lot, too. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah, so, um, and who's your, which publisher or publishers you went through to um, publish your books? Okay, so the first book, Rembrandt's Shadow, was published by Post Hill Press, distributed by Simon & Schuster. Okay. So I got a lot of attention, mm -hmm. and now this book, let's see what happens. I went with a um, publisher here in um, the South, Okay. and I'm very pleased with the way they made the cover look, okay. the way their uh, uh, editing was beautiful, beautifully done, and so I'm very pleased with this one, okay. too. And what's the <laughs> name of the publisher for Restitution? Oh, um, Kohler. Kohler? Kohler, K-O-E-H-L-A-R, and what a team. They're oh, great. great. They're great. <laughs> yeah, what um, city are they out of? Um, Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay. All right, so how did you find your publishers? Well, I submitted to a few publishers, and I, I was weighing between um, Kohler and another one, and Kohler was the winner for me. Oh, cool. And yeah. why were they the, the winner? Well, because I saw what they offered me, and I saw their uh, professionalism when I read about them. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool, yes. Um, you talk about editors. Did you, were the editors on staff for these books, or did you have to hire your own editor? They were on staff. They were on staff. Yes. Good. Yes. I, well, being I had to get my MFA in Stony Brook, Long Island, uh, you know how many years ago was that <laughs> 2009 I think I finally got my MFA uh, I went back to school you know at a late later age of course okay and um, I, I did a lot of editing I was doing editing with professors and then I would have writers groups on Long Island okay. and they were very talented so I felt like I was right on target and Kohler said I we did a great job, so they didn't have that much. Oh, that's yeah. great. <laughs> yeah. That's great. What is one of the most surprising things you have learned from creating these books in self-publishing? Well, I call it indie publishing more than self-publishing. Um, well, I would say um, the things I learned. I learned, well, while I was writing the book, I learned I needed an outline for myself. Like I needed a beginning and a middle, which they call the muddle, and an end. And I would actually uh, place out index cards like a puzzle and then rearrange right. how the writing would go. Um, what did I learn from the indie publishers, though? I, I learned that it does take teamwork. It, it takes a village. <laughs> yes. Okay, cool. That's what right. are you That's working it. on now? Oh, okay. So I always have my wheels are always turning. <laughs> But uh, I'm an animal lover and children lover, so I'm, I'm working on, right now it's, it's completely written, but we're having an illustrator, my uh, co-author and myself are working on a children's book for downtown Charleston, uh, and the title is um, Boomer and Joey's Charleston Adventure, and it should be very, very cute oh. and funny. Yeah, calamity for sure. <laughs> yes, we look forward to reading that. Thank you. And my last question is, what advice would you give an author or a writer who would want to publish a book, either self-publish or do a write or go through an independent publisher? Okay, advice. Don't give up is, is the first thing I would say. If it's your true love. Mm -hmm. I, I could have thrown in the towel so many times. I mean, in the beginning... There were, I probably went through 60 rejections and one very big literary agent who uh, was the agent for Joy Luck Club, Amy Tan, mm -hmm. um, had a second reader read my book and I was so close and yeah. then that didn't happen. And I thought, you know what, I, I think I can do this and I just persisted and never give up if you, if you believe in yourself. And I so believe in the story. It's a tribute to... The, those lost in the Holocaust and to our family and grandfather and his brother who who, who went through, uh, they endured negotiating with uh, the Nazis for so many years. Okay. Thank you so much for being here and Thank talking you, to us Maya. about your, and, um, your process to get the, these books out to the world. Thank, Thank you, you, Maya. This library is beautiful and best of luck to you too. Thank you. <laughs> okay.